dadaan na na man tanuno man di we just arrived in the province of Bukit Non. I'm going to go see Rene. They're involved in Hanelaban Foundation, which is basically a coffee tied into a reforestation program. Basically, you buy one bag of Hanelaban coffee, and then a forest tree sort of gets planted here in Bukit Non. So they've sort of tied their coffee and reforestation together. Basically, it's like a sip and reforest concept. We're just going to go see Renee and she can explain more about it. So explain to me a little bit more how you've tied your coffee farm in with your reforest station, because that's really interesting. You know, our passion is really reforesting in trees. Yeah. From here, we have six river systems okay. that traverse all over Mindanao from yeah. one mountain range, right? Right. Um, and if you gather all these mountain ranges here, it's sort of like the watershed. Without water, there's no irrigation. Yeah. So we really need to preserve and reforest what's left, mm -hmm. right? So, but when you go up there in the mountains to reforest, you actually, um, meet all these indigenous people and yeah, they live right. there. It's yeah. an ancestral domain. How are we going to help them? Because they're going to be the custodians of the forest. Yes. They're the ones that's going to help us reforest, right? Mm -hmm. And take care and preserve it, right? Yeah, right, right. We thought, well, what can grow up there with that kind of soil and climate and all that? And, you know, we're avid fans of coffee. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Arabica coffee. Five years ago, we just decided, let's try. It actually worked out well. So, Hinilaban, it's a book non terminology okay. that means the mother tree of the forest that sustains the cycle of all life. Okay, and it's right. a sacred term for them, so we really have to um, use it in high esteem for right. yeah, their yeah, culture. Too. Yeah, yeah. The Hinilaban Foundation's goal is really to bring the coffee straight to the consumer and cut the middleman. Middle man, ah, yeah. right, okay. So, with, yeah. with doing that, not only is it fair trade, obviously, but it brings more to the indigenous people yeah, instead of just yeah. the buying price of the bean. Exactly, right, yeah? right. So the indigenous people grow it. It's their labor mm -hmm. and their land, right? Okay. But it's our inputs and seedlings and technology yes, yeah. and, and um, so we help sustain it. So, right. so we, surprisingly enough, um, we had the coffee cup, you know, um, to several people, Canadian roaster, also to a New Yorker uh, roaster, Italian, Japanese, and they all loved it. They're so amazed that you have Arabica in the Philippines, right, yeah. and with that good quality, right? So we were graded as um, best coffee, Arabica coffee in the Philippines by Karen wow. Lotsai, who's the only internationally accredited Q grader in the Philippines. And we send it around the world to roasters, you know, master yeah, roasters. Yeah, yeah. And they said that it's a specialty coffee. So specialty coffee, you know, can demand a higher price. Higher price. So of course yeah. it makes the indigenous people proud, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's theirs and they've yes. been working for it, Yes, right? and it's their name. Exactly. Right, so the story goes from start to finish yeah. and helps the indigenous people. And once the, um, their livelihood is sustainable, they're gonna stop cutting the trees, right? So each tree that we plant, um, we take a Google picture and it takes the coordinates of the tree, mm -hmm. right? What we do is we give it a tree ID code. So in the back of each pack, and we have a Google map section of our website where you can actually log in your code and then see your tree pop Good up tree. in a Google map. Wow. And every That's day amazing. you'll be updated. And we have a Facebook page, so you can check that out also. So you can actually see the development of your tree. Yes, the actual tree. We'll upload a new picture of that same tree, January, every January. We have just purchased a packet of Hanelaban Foundation coffee by going on their website. We have named our tree Market to Master and you can follow its growth by logging on to our website markettomaster.com.
here we are in the world's largest pineapple plantation, which is the view from Bukitnon Country Lodge. I'll be heading back there soon to go bake some cakes using pineapple and using banana. Bukitnon Country Lodge is a very, very beautiful family home that's sort of been converted into an exclusive getaway. They also have the endangered barking deer, which we'll go out and check a little bit later. And then after that, we can just sort of chill and relax and enjoy us stay here in Bukitnon, the pineapple country. Okay, so we've just come back from having a look at the pineapples um, in the plantation. We've also bought our coffee, which has then planted our tree. What I'm going to do with bananas is I'm going to make a banana and walnut cake. The ingredients for this is we've got two cups of self-raising flour. We have a half a teaspoon of baking soda. We have two eggs. We have some salt. We have one cup of brown sugar. We have a half a cup of melted butter and then a little bit of sour cream. So what I do with my banana bread is I put a little bit of sour cream and it sort of gives it an extra um, depth of flavor. It also makes it just a little bit more creamy. And then we've got walnuts and just sort of break them up in your hands. You still want really nice chunks of walnuts kicking through your banana bread. And then we've got these beautiful bananas. So the first step we have to do is we have to get these bananas cut up. We then need to get our flour and we can sort of mix all of our dry ingredients in now. So our self-raising flour, our baking soda can go in. Then just a little pinch of salt in there. So just whisk everything together and then it'll get rid of all of your lumps. Okay, so once that's done, we can put that aside. So our bananas, now we're just gonna sort of crush them a little bit. Just sort of make them into like a rough puree. Then we add our brown sugar. You could add honey if you wanted. We just wanna whisk it until we don't hear any more sugar granules being sort of crushed at the bottom of the bowl. We make sure that all of the sugar has dissolved. We can pour that in a little bit at a time. Okay, so once that's all incorporated, we can now get our eggs in. Okay, so one egg can go in there. And another one can go in there. Okay. Credit when I get our sour cream. This just helps richen it up. And then right at the end, we'll get our wool nuts in. So once that's folded in there, everything's incorporated nicely. We have not overworked it, which means the bread should be nice and light, nice and fluffy. I've got this cake tin, um, which is non-stick, but if yours is not non-stick, all you have to do is just get some butter and then just rub it inside. So, We'll just give us a little shake and just a little push down just to even everything out. And you can see we still have like little lumps of bananas. We still have really nice um, walnuts running through it. So it's a real coarse uh, banana bread. But if you like it fine, if you like it smooth, just sort of mash up your bananas and really grind up your walnuts. Okay, so once it's all in and we've sort of given it a shake, all the air bubbles are out. 200 degree oven, it goes in, it'll probably take about 45 minutes and it'll be, hopefully be nice and brown and risen. While I wait for my banana bread to bake, I just have enough time to go see the rare Philippine spotted deer. These beautiful creatures are actually an endangered species due to major deforestation in recent years. It's believed that in 1996, only 2,500 animals still existed. 
Now it's time to head back to the kitchen where Terry is going to prep for our next dish. With these rings that Terry's beautifully cutting for us, there's only one real cake that you can make that everyone sort of recognizes, and that's pineapple upside down cake, which is a pretty simple dish to make. It's really, really easy. So once these are done, we'll get stuck into the pineapple upside down cake. Thank you very much. Very well done. Look at that, right? All the same thickness. That's how simple it is. Basically, there's pineapples at the bottom of a cake tin. A simple white cake mix goes on top and then it just gets baked in the oven. Basically what I've done is brown sugar goes, butter's in, and we're just going to get a little bit of brown sugar in there. And we're just gonna swirl it around like that. Okay, once that's done, we need to sort of bake it from the base upwards. So in, we can nestle these beautiful pineapples and then just sort of spiral them all the way around like so. So now building it from the base down, we get these cherries and then just sort of drop them into the holes of the pineapples just in there. And then the last one just goes in there. We've got these pecan nuts. So we will just sort of dot them all the way around here. So basically, what we're trying to do here is when we put the cake batter on top, we bake it in the oven, the brown sugar and the butter at the base of the cake is sort of gonna caramelize. All of the juice from the pineapple is gonna go inside the caramel and it's gonna sort of be like a pineapple caramel base with a cake on top. We'll turn it upside down and Bob's your uncle. And now we can sort of keep this to the side. And now it's time to make our cake mix. So we have two cups of flour over here, sugar, a little pinch of salt, the milk can go in, and a quarter cup of sunflower oil. Then our baking powder. And that's gonna be our raising agent for this. Again, an egg, crack it inside the bowl first, pour that in. Our last ingredient is we get about a tablespoon of that freshly squeezed pineapple juice. And then we're just gonna sort of fold this in together. Okay. And again, don't overwork your flour because that's what's gonna make everything go tough. Okay, so once everything's incorporated, you can sort of see everything's really nice and smooth. We'll take that, we'll scrape it off, and then we'll just pour it over like that. I guess once all of the batter's in, we're just gonna push it into the corners. Basically, this is gonna rise up. There'll be a caramel underneath that's gonna form, or the juice is gonna fall from the pineapple down into the caramel, and it will end up being a beautiful thing, okay? This is exactly the same temperature as a banana bread, about 190 to 200. It'll probably be about 45 minutes, and it'll be nice gold on top and well risen. This banana bread is done. It smells really, really nice. Obviously, really good bananas. 
equals really good banana bread. So we just take it out like that. We leave it there to cool on a wire rack. The reason why you leave it on a wire rack is that the cold air can circulate underneath it and it doesn't make the base of the bread go soggy. So that's done. We'll leave it to the side to cool. The next dish I'm going to make is, again, another classic in our house. It's one of my wife's favorite things that I make at home. It's banana, oat, raisin, and honey muffins. So exactly the same as how we made the banana bread. We just have to peel them and then slice them up and then just chop them up and just give them a really light mash. Again, exactly the same as the banana bread. You just have to sort of mash them up a little bit, okay? Okay, exactly the same as the banana bread. Brown sugar can go in, and then just a little bit of this raw honey. And then we're just gonna, again, just sort of stir it until you can't hear the sugar granules anymore. Now we get all our dry ingredients in, so our flour, baking powder, baking soda, our oats, that can just go in, and then the raisins, okay? Leave that to the side, and this is how simple it is to make muffins. In, then break our eggs, again make sure you break it into a bowl first, like so. Make sure there's no shells. In she goes. No shells. In there. Whisk that around. And then oil just goes in. So that's all incorporated again. There's no sound of sugar on the side of the bowl. So just do half. For now. And again, just a folding motion like so. Folding it over, making sure it's all mixed, all around the edges. Then our muffin trays, which is lined with paper inside. We're now just gonna fill these up to about three quarters. So this upside down pineapple cake is now really nice and firm. I, I can smell when it was baking, I could sort of see the caramel sort of coming on the outside and sort of bubbling in, which means it's really sort of soaked into that cake mix. All we have to do is just lightly run our knife around the edges just to make sure for the moment of truth. So we'll turn this over like that very quickly. And what I like to do with the back of a knife is just sort of tap it. And you'll hear, if it's a dull sound, it means it's fallen down. That's fallen down already because it's quite a dull sound. So we just lift this up like so. Okay, there we go. Perfect, and there's our pineapple upside down cake. It smells beautiful, lovely. Here we go.
generous Next, Next time, time on, on Market, Market to Master. Master. Next time on Market to Master, we head over to Davao and go see Olive from Malagos Farm and see what makes her award-winning cheese so popular. <laughs>